Experienced and highly skilled hunter Aaron Gibbons was considered one of the main contributors to the welfare of his people. Well known for his impeccable hunting skills, the 31-year-old was furthermore by all accounts a family man, who had a big heart and loved providing the meat that he hunted for the needy in his community of approximately 2,500 people of the indigenous Inuit tribe. This tribe comprised of a whopping 92% of the population of this harsh, inhospitable, and frozen landscape. Known for its artists, hunters, painters, stone carvers, sculptors, and singers, this diversely skilled indigenous community furthermore consists of some of the most resilient people on the planet. Not only do these people endure winters that average a bone-chilling minus 30 degrees Celsius, but they furthermore share this land with one of the most formidable apex predators that man has ever known, the mighty polar bear. Very few people in the world have ever encountered a polar bear in the wild, and this of course is with good reason. These majestic creatures live in the arctic regions of the earth, which are once again one of the most inhospitable areas of our planet. Therefore, it should come as no surprise to most of us that they furthermore possess the physical attributes required to dominate in such a land. And this of course is one of the key contributing factors to the growing concerns that the people that live here have due to the rising numbers in polar bear human encounters. Scenes like this used to be rare. Lately, they happen every day in Arvet. Local authorities are on constant patrol for polar bears on the outskirts of town, but the real problem, the bears coming into Arvet looking for food. Like the one that chased two girls down the street last week. Averaging weights of 770 to 1500 pounds and lengths of over 9.8 feet, it's no wonder why polar bears are considered one of the largest amongst all land carnivores on Earth. Despite their massive size, polar bears are furthermore highly capable runners, reaching speeds of up to 35 miles per hour. Not to mention their razor-sharp claws and large jagged molars and premolars help them hunt and tear into thick fat or blubber with ease. On July 3rd, 2018, Aaron decided to take his kids via boat to Sentry Island for some quality time. Known as a popular fishing spot, this island is furthermore a hotspot for beluga whale hunting, both for humans and polar bears alike. The group planned on harvesting bird eggs, something that's only done in a few places in the world, northern Canada being amongst a handful of countries where this is possible. And this is of course thanks to its unpolluted and pristine wilderness. Aaron and the kids have a quick breakfast before departing on a 10 mile journey to Sentry Island. Practically the second the group got to the island, the kids, who were all around elementary school age, excitedly run off the boat and begin doing what kids their age do best. As he keeps a close eye on the children, Aaron tethers the boat to the dock and thereby joins his children on the island shore. Aaron then briefs the kids on the do's and don'ts of gathering wild eggs, as well as what they should do if they were to encounter any sort of problems. For example, if a bird parent were to say, get defensive with them. And so, shortly after the briefing, off the kids went, their faces shining with joy and excitement, as if they were taking on what seemed like a late Easter egg hunt. As his children hunted bird eggs, Aaron gets lost in thought for a few moments. As he gazes into the distance, his heart suddenly skips a beat when he notices a huge white mass slowly heading in the children's direction. It's important to note that polar bears are one of the only predators on Earth that see humans as prey. They have been known to stalk, kill, and consume humans when given the opportunity. Not to mention, the chances of surviving an encounter with a polar bear in its natural habitat without risking serious injury is highly improbable. Aaron snaps out of his state of shock, realizing the danger that his kids are in. Being the experienced hunter that he was, he instantly reads the polar bear's body language noticing it had its head down with its ears pointing backwards, a telltale sign that it was on the hunt. The polar bear locks its sights on one of Aaron's daughters as she was focused on a specific bird's nest, unaware of course of the impending danger. Meanwhile, the other kids are running from nest to nest, also unaware of the polar bear's presence. Things at this point seem to be happening in slow motion for Aaron, as his senses heightened thanks to an altruistic surge of adrenaline. Aaron shouts out to the children to run toward the boat as he simultaneously sprinted toward them in a desperate attempt to get in between them and the bear. And it was during this time that he realizes that he'd accidentally left his rifle on the boat. 
a quick thinker on his feet, the skilled outdoorsman then begins picking up large rocks as he's running and starts hurling them at the bear in a desperate attempt to distract or hopefully even scare it off as it closed in on the kids. As a few of the baseball sized rocks make contact with the bear's side, the enormous polar bear suddenly stops in its tracks and finally turns its attention toward Aaron. As the bear began approaching Aaron, he quickly shouts instructions to his eldest daughter to radio in for emergency assistance. Despite continuous attempts to fend the bear off while throwing rocks at it, this particular polar bear was not going to let anything get in between it and its meal. Left with no other choice, Aaron turns his back toward the bear and begins sprinting as fast as he could toward the boat, hoping that he could potentially make it there on time and get to his rifle or at least get close enough so one of the kids could throw it over to him. But to his misfortune, it became clear that there was no way he was outrunning the bear, as in a matter of just a few moments, the much faster polar bear catches up to Aaron, tackles him to the ground, and begins viciously mauling him. The children meanwhile helplessly look on in horror as the massive polar bear bites into their father's neck and begins viciously throwing him back and forth on the cold hard ground, which was bathed in huge rocks. The blunt force trauma and the sheer shock of the situation triggers a cocktail of adrenaline and endorphins to surge through Aaron's system in an attempt to numb what was undoubtedly an excruciatingly painful experience. As they watch their father's body go limp, the kids then turn their heads away in horror as the polar bear begins to feed on their father's body. Authorities would arrive at the scene a short time later and rescue the four traumatized children, furthermore shooting and killing the bear immediately upon arrival at the scene. Aaron's half-eaten remains were thereby recovered and brought back to his family, who of course given Aaron's significance to his community as a provider, were not the only ones devastated by his tragic passing. As a response to the attack, the elders of Aaron's community noted that about 60 years ago, there was a time in which they could sleep under the stars and never have to worry about polar bears, but now it seems that things have certainly changed. In the increased number of polar bear sightings around the community and the knowledge that these bears actively stalk human beings and see us as prey, community members are now demanding that the Canadian government increase the amount of polar bears that can be killed in each region per year, as there were more than 300 sightings of polar bears in close proximity to the community in 2018 alone. If you enjoyed this episode, then you should definitely check out our last episode, featuring one of the most gruesome grizzly bear attacks in the history of Yellowstone.